Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Amazon ECS video series. In the last few episodes, we've been building up our ECS knowledge step by step. So, let's do a quick recap of our journey so far. First, we explored the core components of ECS, the four building blocks that power container orchestration on AWS. Then, we deployed an Nginx container as a direct task using the EC2 launch type. This showed us how ECS can run standalone containers on EC2 instances. And then, we took things further by running Nginx as a service on ECS with EC2 instances, giving us scaling and long-running container management. Now in this video, we're going to switch gears from EC2 to Fargate, the serverless way to run containers on ECS. We'll deploy an Nginx container as a direct task using the Fargate launch type. Then, deploy an Nginx container as a service using Fargate launch type. By the end of this episode, you'll see how Fargate simplifies container management, no servers to provision, no EC2 instances to worry about, just your containers running on AWS managed infrastructure. Alright, with that said, let's jump into the demo and see Fargate in action. Let's start by heading over to the ECS console from your AWS management console. On the left-hand sidebar, click on Clusters to open the Clusters section. Now, click on the Create Cluster button. Go ahead and give this cluster a meaningful name so you'll know exactly what it's used for later. For the infrastructure type, we'll leave the default option set to AWS Fargate. In the monitoring settings, we'll keep the defaults. For the encryption settings, we'll also stick with the default values. We won't be adding any tags for this cluster. Once everything looks good, click on the Create button to create the cluster. When the cluster is created successfully, click on it to open and navigate inside. Right now, you'll notice there are no services associated with this cluster. You'll also see that there are no tasks running in this cluster yet. Next, click on the Infrastructure tab. Here, you'll see two capacity providers available, Fargate and Fargate Spot. Don't worry if you're not familiar with them yet, we'll be covering capacity providers in more detail in a future video. Now that our cluster is ready, the next step is to create a task definition. From the sidebar menu, go ahead and click on Task Definitions. Here, choose Create New Task Definition. First, Give this task definition a clear and meaningful name so we know exactly what it's for. Under Infrastructure Requirements, we'll stick with the default Fargate launch type. For task size, I'll select 1 vCPU and 2 GB of memory, which is more than enough for this setup. For the task role, we'll leave it empty since this example doesn't need permission to interact with other AWS services. For the task execution role, leave it at the default, which will automatically create a new role for us. The task placement and fault injection settings are optional, so we'll leave them untouched. Next, in the container details section, enter the container name as Nginx. For the image URI, use the public Nginx image available from the Amazon ECR public gallery. I've added the link in the description for you. Under port mappings, keep the default values for container port, protocol, and app protocol, but don't forget to assign a proper name to the port. Now, let's configure the resource allocation limits. Set the CPU to 1, the memory hard limit to 1, and the memory soft limit to 0.5. We'll leave all the other settings as they are, and then click on Create to finish up. Once the task definition is created, you'll see the container details listed under the Containers tab. You can also open up the JSON tab to view the full configuration that AWS generated from our inputs. Finally, if you go back to the Task Definitions console, you'll notice this is labeled as version 1, since this is our very first definition. Now, let's go ahead and deploy a standalone task from the task definition we just created, and see how it works with the Fargate launch type. First, select the Task Definition Revision, in our case, that's version 1. Click on Deploy and then choose Run Task. In the Task Details section, leave the default configurations as they are. Under the Environment section, set the Compute option to Launch Type. For Launch Type and Platform version, we'll also keep the default selections. Now, in the Networking section, choose the VPC where you want to deploy this task. 
Since I already have one created, I'll select that. If you don't, you can simply click on create a new VPC to generate one. For this demo, I'll select only public subnets. Later, in future videos, we'll also do deployments on private subnets when we move into more complex setups. Next, let's create a new security group directly from here. Give the security group a descriptive name. For inbound rules, I'll leave the type as default. Set the port range to 80. And set the source to allow traffic from anywhere. Leave the rest of the configuration as it is, and then proceed to create the task. Once the task has been created successfully, click on it to navigate inside and view its details. Here, you'll see all the information related to this running task. Now, click on the public IP address to open the web page in your browser. You should see the default Nginx home page, confirming that our standalone task has been deployed successfully using Fargate. Since we didn't configure any EC2 instances for this setup, where exactly does this public IP come from? Well, even though you don't manage any EC2 instances with Fargate, every task actually gets its own elastic network interface inside your VPC. Because we launched this task in a public subnet and enabled auto-assign public IP, AWS automatically attached a public IPv4 address to that ENI from Amazon's IP pool. That's the IP you see here. All traffic flows through your VPC's internet gateway, and since our security group allows inbound traffic on port 80, the task is accessible directly. Keep in mind, though, this public IP is ephemeral, if the task stops and restarts, the IP will likely change. In real-world deployments, you'd typically front tasks with an application load balancer for a stable endpoint. Let's go back to the ECS console, and under the log section, you'll find logs related to this task. These are generated automatically in CloudWatch logs. Now, let's repeat the same test we did in our previous video. We'll manually stop this task and see if ECS spins up a new one automatically. Select the running task, then click on Stop Selected to stop it. Head back to the web page and refresh. As you can see, our Nginx page is no longer accessible. Now, let's return to the ECS console and click on the Refresh button to update the task details. You'll notice that the task has already been stopped, and no new task has been spun up automatically. Now that we've successfully deployed a standalone task, let's move on and deploy our ECS service using Fargate. First, navigate back to the ECS console and open the Create Service page. Under Task Definition Family, choose the task definition we created earlier. For the task definition revision, select version 1, which is the latest version in our case. Next, give your service name a clear and meaningful value so you can identify it easily later. In the Environment section, set the Compute option to Launch Type. Leave both the Launch Type and the Platform version as they are with their default values. In the Deployment Configuration section, we'll also keep the default settings. Now, under Networking Configuration, select the same VPC that we used previously. Choose the two public subnets for this service. And finally, select the security group that we created earlier. Leave the rest of the configuration settings at their default values, and then proceed to create the ECS service. Once the service has been deployed successfully, you'll notice that one task is running. Navigate to the Tasks tab, and click on the running task to open and view its details. Here, you can find the public IP address of the task. Click on the public IP, and you should see the default Nginx home page, confirming that our ECS service has deployed the task successfully. Now, go back to the task section in the ECS console. Select the running task and click on stop to stop it manually. After a few moments, you'll notice that ECS automatically starts a new task to maintain the desired minimum count for the service. Let's click on the new task to navigate inside it. Click on the public IP address of this new task. You'll see that the Nginx default homepage is once again successfully deployed, this time on the new ECS task managed by our service. And that's all for the hands-on with the Fargate launch type. Now you know how to deploy ECS tasks using both EC2 and Fargate launch types. In the next video, we'll dive deeper into Amazon Elastic Container Service and see how to integrate it for more advanced deployments and real-world workflows.
So, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.